I'm Chris Ann Hall. I'm a constitutional attorney, author, educator, and talk show host. Let's talk about Oregon. Because it's not about the Hammonds. It's not about the Bundys. And it's time to take back the narrative. It's time to stop being directed and led by the media. It is time to stop being directed and led by the federal government's whims. It's time to know the facts. This is not about the Hammonds. This is not about the Bundys. This is about a federal government that is operating outside the supreme law of the land. The people are not acting lawlessly. It is the federal government that's acting lawlessly. The federal government has no authority to own any land outside Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 says that the federal government's only authority to own land is 10 square miles for Washington, D.C., and the amount of land necessary to operate forts and ports at the permission of the states. So if the states don't want the forts and ports anymore, they have the authority to withdraw the permission. The only other section that someone could claim is Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2, that deals with territories and then further uh, expands or further expounds on the application of the ownership of land that we talked about in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Let's be very clear about this territories thing. Go read the Constitution. Territory is capitalized. This is a proper noun with a specific meaning, and the federal government owns no territory within the continental U.S. Territory is not even land that the government owns. Territory is land that the government holds in trust for the states. Once a state petitions to become a state and a member of the union, that is no longer a territory, and the federal government has no authority over it. You see, once a state petitions and becomes a member of the Union as a state, it is an independent, free, and sovereign government. It's called the Equal Footing Doctrine, and even the Supreme Court of the United States upholds this doctrine. It says that every state that enters the Union enters on the same footing as the first 13. Go read the Declaration of Independence. You'll see what that footing is. Independent, free, and sovereign. You cannot be a territory and be sovereign. You cannot be a state and still be a territory. The federal government has no lawful control over any land in the states outside forts and ports and 10 square miles for Washington, D.C. Show me in the Constitution the authority for the Bureau of Land Management. I challenge you to show me because you cannot. There is no authority for the federal government to dictate to the states or the people how they operate their land. Do not recite to me executive order. There is no phone or pen big enough to alter the Constitution. Do not cite to me Congressional Act. Congress cannot pass laws to alter the Constitution outside Article 5 amendment process. Article 6, Section 2, Clause 2 says that no law made by Congress contrary to the Constitution is valid. Alexander Hamilton said the same thing in Federalist Papers 33. No law contrary, no law outside the Constitution is a valid law at all. The Bureau of Land Management, the federal government controlling our land, is a law that is lawless. It is outside the Constitution. Do not tell me the Supreme Court said this or that because the Supreme Court does not have the constitutional authority to expand the power of the federal government or create new powers. That is not the role of the, of the Supreme Court. They don't even have the authority to be the ultimate arbiters of the Constitution. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, tells us in 1798, as he's arguing before the ratification of the Constitution, hey, the, f the Supreme Court of the United States is not above the states. The Supreme Court of the United States cannot make law. The Supreme Court of the United States is not the ultimate arbiter of the Constitution. James Madison so very clearly explains that the ultimate arbiters of the Constitution are the states themselves. They are the creators of the contract. They are the drafters of the contract. They are the uh, people, the ones who actually 
ratified the contract creating the federal government. The states are the creators of the federal government. They are the controllers of the federal government. It is time for us to understand the proper role and function of our government. Do not tell me Marbury versus Madison. That is circular logic. The Supreme Court cannot create an opinion that expands its own power. When the Supreme Court is the ultimate arbiter of its own power and its own authority, that is not a constitutional republic created by the people. That is an oligarchy where the power rests within the government itself. James Madison said, when the government controls the property of the people, that is not a just government. We need to realize that this is a constitutional republic, government instituted among men, deriving its just power from the consent of the governed. If the federal government is not defined by the Constitution, why do we even have one? If the federal government is not limited in its power by the Constitution, then what is the limit of the federal government's power? If the federal government can dictate to the people and to the states how and when they can use their land, you are not a freeman. Freemen have control over their property. And when government dictates how you operate your property, the only thing missing in servitude are the physical chains. This is not about the Bundys. This is not about the Hammonds. This is about maintaining the integrity of the Constitution. This is about defending the Constitutional Republic. This is about making a defined and limited federal government that is under the power of the people in the states. So it's up to us to decide. Do we get led by the nose of the, of the media merit narrative? Do we get controlled by the oligarchical power of the federal government? Or do we declare ourselves freemen? As our Constitution says, government instituted among men deriving their just power from the consent of the governed. It is time to know the facts. It is time to stand for the truth. It is not about a person. It is not about people. It is about liberty. It is about power of the people. And it is about a limited and defined government. So I ask you today, what do you want? Do you want a constitutional republic where the people control the government, where the states are independent and sovereign, or do you want a totalitarian oligarchy where a federal government decides what power it can have and it can own and, and how it can use that power with a pen and a phone or a law? Do we want an unlimited federal government? Or do we want to stand for what's right? Do we want to stand for what's true? I don't care what your politicians say. I don't care what your favorite uh, presidential candidate says. The Constitution is the foundation of America. And if the federal government can set that aside, there is no limit on it at all. It's time, America. It is time to defend the republic. And it is time to put the federal government back in its limited and defined box that will only happen when the people know the truth. Time to make that decision. If the people wish to be ignorant and free, we should wish for what never was, and what never will be. Understand, we are the holders of the power. We are the owners of our property. And when a government dictates property, we are nothing. We are nothing but tributary slaves.